Good morning everybody, KT here with Wise Images Photography and welcome to my channel if this is the first time that you are coming here. Today we are going to go ahead and check out the Avian Reconditioning Center over in Apopka, Florida. I was there the other day, so I'm just going to go ahead and share with you guys about my experience at this location. So let's get going. The Avian Reconditioning Center opened back up in like 2001 but it actually opened up to the public in 2004 and their focus is on raptors and what their goal is is to rehab them and get them prepared to be released back out into the wild as well as focusing on educating others about these magnificent creatures they have all sorts of birds there. They have like eagles and caracaras and owls and red-shouldered hawks and red-tailed hawks, all different types of raptors that are there. And they have specialized designed um, facilities for these animals to be able to get them rehabbed and put back out in the wild. And then if they need to stay there, because for whatever reason they are not able to be released back to the wild, they then become an educational bird and all of their like little homes are designed specifically for their unique characteristics, which is fantastic. They also have special educational programs available where they can go to you or you can come to them. They are open on Saturdays, except for in August, which is a very hot month here in Florida. Definitely go and check them out. It is only five dollars. Their staff or their staff and their their volunteers are very, very knowledgeable about all these birds. And you will be amazed at what you learn. And if the weather is permitting, they also have flight demonstrations, which is really cool to see. I had the pleasure of going to Sir Henry's happy Valentine's Day party the other day. Sir Henry is actually a barn owl, and barn owls, if you didn't know, they are actually considered the Valentine owl because of their heart-shaped face and with them being white and then almost kind of like, their, their kind of like the outline almost looks a little bit like a reddish brown color. And so they're considered the Valentine's owl. And needless to say, I had tons of fun when I was out there. Um, the very first bird that I got to meet was Whisper. I was standing over by the gift shop and she came right on over and said hi to me. And she was absolutely magnificent. Now I did get to learn um, the differences between the male and the female because the male barn owl has more of a white chest whereas a female has more of a brown chest so i got to learn that little bit of information there now when you're out there they have an educational building it's an open kind of uh, an open building with a covering on it and they have all the birds and they're out there on their purchase perches and what happens is is you go ahead and you can ask them to bring over a bird and they'll ask you which bird do you want us to bring over to you and then they'll go ahead and bring that bird over to you and go ahead and talk with you about that particular bird i thought it was really cool because i got to see like a, a red-shouldered hawk and a red-tailed hawk and i got to see them really close together so i was able to observe the differences between them we got to see eagles and kites and owls and, and all sorts of different birds. The other uh, bird that I got to see was a peregrine, a per peregrine falcon. The falconeer was doing a flight demonstration and what he was doing was he was showing us how they train these birds to get used to hunting back out in the wild. And so he did his flight demonstration and swinging everything around and the bird was coming down and, and whatnot. And I learned that these birds can go 240 miles per hour. That is fast, that is so fast. And I thought that was really cool. And a little bit later on after the flight demonstration, um, one of the volunteers brought over Sparky, which is one of their peregrine falcons, and I was able to see the nostrils. And if you look at the nostrils, you can tell that it kind of looks a little bit like a jet engine plane. Well, the reason why they have these special nostrils is because you can only imagine that going and diving at 240 miles per hour, you have to have a way to protect your brain from all that wind coming into your brain. So 
these nostrils are designed to keep that wind from going into the brain. And if you look at the jet engine that I was trying to explain to you guys a few seconds ago, it looks exactly like a jet engine because the engineers, when they were designing planes, basically stole that idea in, in those special nostrils. And so I just found that really super fascinating. And I probably explained it all wrong, but it was just really fascinating to see. Yes, it was very similar. And they both have the same function of keeping air from going into the brain or air going into that jet engine. Now, another thing that I learned about was a little bit more about the talons. And I learned about the different types of talons versus like a thicker talon versus a thinner talon. But I want to share my most, most, I want to share my most fascinating fact was about the Osprey and about their talons. You see, normally the Osprey has like a three talons in the front and the one talon in the back, but they have an adaptation. They can actually take the one talon here and move it to the back. And I know my hands can't really go like a bird, right? But then they have a two-two system to be able to do all the grabbing, which is exactly like an owl. And I just thought that was really cool that they can pivot that one talon back and forth. Now, if this sounds like a really cool place and you would like to go visit it because you wanna learn more about birds, definitely go ahead and give me a like. Y'all, I really enjoyed this location because I learned a lot because I really did not know much about raptors and it just really sparked my interest in wanting to learn more about these raptors and also more about birds in general and, and learning about their different adaptations and stuff like that, I would definitely make sure that you check out their website. They have information on there about um, their educational programs, uh, about their muse, about the, the location in general, also information about like what do you do if you find a bird and how you can definitely support them or if you're interested in volunteering at this location. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. Today was a very short video today, but it is definitely a place you should check out. Make sure you hit that like so other people know that it is a cool place to go ahead and visit. And also, please, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell so that that way you don't miss any other future episodes and share with others so that that way we can continue to grow the channel and teach people about nature, photography, and also go on fun-filled adventures. I want to hear from you. What was the cool fact that you learned today that you thought was super awesome, but you have a cool fact? Share it with me because I would love to hear it. Well, we're going to go and wrap up for today. I want to say have an awesome week. See you later, alligator.